So my first step in putting these power pole brackets on is going to be to loosen up this bolt and this bolt. And there's one on each side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side and just back it off to where I have a little bit of play and then on the other side I'll be able to take it all the way off. Now you want some kind of support on your motor and I did put a block of wood down here just to hold the weight of it just a little bit. If you leave one side on this motor shouldn't come all the way off and you do have some very small grips on this Optimax motor so that if it does slide back a little bit they're gonna catch right there but that's no safety function you want to make sure that you have this motor supported so it doesn't fall off this boat or crack the transom when you're taking those bolts out if you'll get inside your battery compartment here you can wedge that crescent wrench or whatever you're using down like that and it'll hold that bolt while you take the nut off okay you can see I've loosened these nuts right here you can see the little gap all the way down I may have to loosen them a little bit more but they're holding the motor good right there now on the other side I've got the bottom one off and the bolt backed out this one you can see this motor has came down a little and it's putting pressure on this. So if I take a hammer and try to knock it back in, I'm gonna mess the threads up. So if you notice here, I took this short nail bar and I can move that motor to where I can get the pressure off that bracket. Once you do that, you can back that bolt out. Okay, this is pretty simple. I've got a uh, transducer cable that goes into my hull right up here through about right there so I've got to be careful and angle this bracket in but once you get it in it slides around pretty good and I'm gonna run this bolt back through on the top side I'll put the nut on this one and then I'll get this ran through and leave them both loose but I will snug them up to here so that it holds this motor from moving when I do the other side Okay, so there's the bracket installed. I did run into one problem with this thing, and this is a Triton 17 Explorer. This bolt on the top is gonna be too short. So I'm gonna have to extend that bolt by about an inch. So I'll go get some new stainless bolts tomorrow, and I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, now let's get these poles on these brackets. They send you with some bolts to mount the pole to the bracket. The way you're gonna do that, you've got your bolt, you've got one washer that's got a rubber piece. You're gonna run that through and that will go through the pole bracket. Then you'll have a washer and a hex nut and those will go on the back side. So the thick washer goes on the back side and the bolt goes through this way. Okay, so I haven't tightened these bolts down yet, and I'll show you, see how much play this thing has in it. Now, if I tilt it in like this, these arms are gonna go out like that. You'll have a much wider base, make you more stable, but it's not gonna go as deep as if they're straight up. Okay, my next step here will be to mount the pumps. And you've gotta find a good spot uh, in your battery compartment most likely to mount these pumps now you want them to be as level as possible and it comes with this bracket now this brackets pretty cool it can mount two different ways you can see these two holes here they get bolts so you can mount this bracket where it sits like this or you can mount it on the side where it sits like this and of course you can flip it over and go this way too. 
So that gives you quite a few different options on where you mount these. So I'm gonna look for a spot in my boat to mount them. Okay, maybe you can see where I'm gonna mount my bracket here. It's gonna go right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill some pilot holes in here in each one of those four and then put my screws in. Now this can be hard to do, it's awkward. So, just gotta kinda take it slow and figure out exactly how you wanna do this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold that bracket up against there. I'm gonna drill one hole. And then, I'm just gonna line it up there and screw it in. Now use a screwdriver for this and not a drill because you do not want to strip this out because then you'll have to drill another hole. You don't want to have to do that. So now I can take this drill, drill me some holes here, try to get the screws as straight as possible. All right, I'm gonna put those other two in. Okay, now my bracket's on there. Let me give you a better look at it. You can see it right there. Now I've got room on the back side of that bracket to put my bolts through to my pump. So before I put this in, I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in it, hydraulic fluid anyway, and that's going to make it easier where I don't have to pour it while it's in the boat. I've got them set where I think they'll be pretty easy to pour when I need to, but when I'm pouring a whole bottle in, I might as well add it before I put it in the boat. Okay, so when you get to this part, you're gonna have these pieces right here. I don't know if you can see those. This is gonna go right on the inside and the pump will go against that. And then your washer will go on your bolt just like that and come in from the back side and screw into your pump. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead, push those bolts through, put my rubber piece in there, and I'll have those kind of where they need to be. And you can actually just set that pump against the bottom of the bolt, boat start that first bolt and then line that second one up now I'm gonna go ahead and screw them down not quite tight get my wrench ready 9 sixteenths and then you can raise this up as high as you want to raise it on that bracket so that's where I'm gonna put it right there now it's just a matter of tightening these bolts on the back. And those rubber washers will keep that thing from slipping up and down, theoretically. All right. One thing I want you to notice is how I mounted this. I mounted this pump in here with the refill pointed kind of out in the open where I can get a jug on it pretty easy and refill this. Same with this one over here. I just mounted them opposite. I have plenty of space in mine. You may not have this much in yours, but I just mounted them opposite each other and I made sure that I'd have room to pour here. So that's pretty important. So make sure you've got that. Okay, the next step is to run these wires to the battery. So I'm just gonna take these wires and I'm gonna run them 
down one of these other lines that are going to this battery and then I'll just zip tom to it. So I like to keep these as neat as possible. Keep the wires kind of out of the way. So you can see I've zip tied this across here and then my excess I've zip tied together in a neat roll and I'll put it back behind this battery when I get done here. Two red wires, one for each pump and two black wires. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is strip these wires Got grease on my hand, so it's a little hard to hang on to some of this. Okay, I've got those stripped. Now, this comes with these for each pump. And I thought I'd try to put them together, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. So I'm gonna have to do them individually. Which, it's not a problem, it just adds more connections on your battery. Now you just put these on here and crimp them down. And these are heat shrink. What that does is it helps prevent them from corroding. And it works pretty good. It's not foolproof, but I always try to heat shrink all the electrical net connections in my boat. Now I bought this boat used and so, you, I don't know if you can see that, but some of those are not heat shrinked and you can see that they do get a little corrosion on them when they're not heat shrinked. Anything on a boat's gonna get moisture to it. So, so to heat shrink it, you just rotate it around, put a little heat on it See how that closes down? Now you don't want to burn it. There you go. And that keeps some of that moisture from getting down there on the wire. These are ready to go. They're ready to hook up to the battery. But we don't want to do that yet. We don't want these pumps coming on until we have got our hydraulic lines connected to our power poles. So these are just gonna sit here for now don't let them touch the battery poles, short something out. So we're gonna set those there, and then we're gonna hook up these hydraulic lines. Now, my thoughts on this first pole, on the driver's side, is to run these, I've got a lot of room right here, so I'm gonna run these lines through here and into this right side pump. Now your pumps are gonna be labeled when you get them, you're gonna have your upline, which is labeled with blue, and it's got a blue cap over your upline and a blue cap on your pump I just took off. And these are gonna be a 5 8 I believe, connections. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna run these down on your pump. Make sure you get your up on the up and your down on the down. And that's all you gotta do. All right, take the red off, and then you'll have a red nipple here. Oh, they had it on black. Sorry about that, that's black, not red. But the red goes with the black, so. Okay, so I'm thinking right in this area somewhere. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to take some painter's tape. And I don't have very much of it there. And where I'm going to drill these holes, I'm going to put this tape. Now you want to make sure that you're coming through in a spot that's going to be a good spot to enter the boat. There's nothing behind it. And that way, when you do get your your holes drilled, you won't have any obstacles to get around here. So that's where we're gonna put it. 
I'm going to take this little drill bit and I'm going to drill some pilot holes right here where I want to go in. Not really even holes, just spots so I can put my bit there and it won't slip. There. Okay, we're going to drill our holes here. Make you nervous drilling into a boat. Boats are not supposed to have holes in them. Didn't hit nothing. That's a good sign. Take your tape off. Not much chip in there at all. A little bit, but not much. The blue line. Into the boat. I'm going to pull this back. They come with grommets, so that's awesome. Once we get this hose where we want it here, we'll push this grommet on in with the line, straighten it there, just give it a wiggle, wiggle that around and just keep pushing it, look how pretty that looks, that's perfect, now this will slip back and forth and adjust a little bit where you need it to, and I'm going to come behind, always keep in mind where these wires are going, or where these uh, hoses are going, so you don't have to reroute them. and the push oh, there we go they're in there now all right next step here is going to be to connect your electrical connections and you should have four. You should have two reds. Here's our wires we had earlier. So I'm gonna gather all these up here in my hand to keep them away from the battery. I'm gonna kind of stuff this back here. And I'm gonna keep these black ones right here out of the way. And I'm gonna put, put my red ones on here. a good snug connection you don't have any shorts or anything like that I'm gonna take my two black ones and put them on the other side the same way all right you hear them that's pretty cool they'll play you a tune Pair the down over here. So each remote you do the same way. Down it goes. Up it goes. Get lanyards. Okay, so I got up here on the front of the boat to figure out where I wanted these foot pedals and I've got them put where I want them. So, I'm gonna go and drill some pilot holes. And I'll put 
put the screws in. All right, I hope this helped you out. Anybody can do this. It took me about five hours videotaping and everything. It's not that bad a job, so give it a try if you've got power poles.